Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I got my man Coach Goo here. We're actually gonna take a second and a third look at his rackets because he's finally got his blade pros perfect. Yep. Now we're gonna go over his rackets and see what he did to them to make them perfect. Stay tuned. All right, so got my man Coach Goo here. We got one of his rackets here and one of his rackets over there. Yeah. Uh, we'll mess with this one here. So this has got the Outlast on here that we're just testing. This is not his standard string. Yeah, uh, Harry, standard likes to, my Harry likes to change strings on my racket, unfortunately. <laughs> well, we got to test stuff, right? So mm -hmm. Goo actually likes a couple strings. Mm -hmm. 4G, well, 130, yeah. Luxalon. Um, Confidential. That's confidential 16. He was okay with Torbite 16, but it lost tension a little too quick for him. Yeah. And he's okay testing out Tarna Silver 7 16 right now. That was actually not bad. I actually like that. I like that. Yeah. So those are his three strings right now. Okay. Or four. Uh, three, three and, and a half. half. Uh, tor, tor, tour bites. Tour uh, bites. Yeah. Fell off the map a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So this is not his string. Okay. But when I first got his racket, what we did was I put, he, he, he tried it stock. Yeah. And he was like, I need something more. I need more weight on there. So, you know, like the, like the, you know, mastermind that I am. I put lead all over the paint here that was in gray, all the way up both sides. And you still see the, the quarter residue inch. Still, yeah, right? you still see the residue here on both sides, all the way up in the gray. Plus, I added four strings worth of lead up here too. Yeah. Okay. Pure lead. And then I didn't. We didn't, didn't do anything, anything after yeah. that. So after month, I would say a month. month yeah, yeah you, you said you loved it. For I loved a little it for while. a bit, and then I started to realize it was a little hefty to swing around. What what made you think that though? Um, I think playing, like actually playing points and sets. I think that affects it because um, when you you know when when you practice versus when you play, it's a little different. Um, your nerves kicking a little more, and you start to realize uh, fatigue kicks in a lot. Fatigue because you have to realize you're swinging a lot of weight around. Like you have to realize lead does make an impact when you start swinging, and you get a little tired. When you start getting a little tired, your weight of the racket, you'll feel it way more. So what I feel like was it was great for the short, for the short goal, for like just practicing and maybe an hour in, but you're playing a full match. You have to realize you'd be swinging this way for almost two and a half hours to three hours. So those guys are way in better shape than I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the weight up for me was a little too heavy when I started to play a little longer. And I started to notice that I was hitting the balls late. I wasn't swinging fast enough. So usually my take back is pretty short, but sometimes with the weight included, you'll feel when you swing the weight around, you'll feel the racket just almost take off. But when you start to fight against it, it feels really tight and it doesn't feel great because at that point you're, you're slowing down in general. That's why I started to realize it's like, hey, maybe if I tone down the weight a little more, um, I don't have to get tight, even though when I get a little tired and tight, at least I can have some leeway to still swing a little quicker and force my swing to come out a little faster. But um, yeah, I know that's why I've noticed. That's why you can tell now I don't have any any weight on twelve is because you know that's that's why I feel most of the weight actually. It's at twelve o'clock. Three and nine is more stability. Mm -hmm. It's more for the stability aspect. So when I hit that ball, there's not a lot of you know bounce back. You would as Many players will know if you shank a ball, you'll realize it will move. With this weight, even if it shanks a bit, it still plows through pretty nice. Like you won't feel this, you won't feel any like awful like trembling off the racket. Yeah. So wherever you put the lead, it stabilizes that yeah. part of it and it keeps it from um, shocking you. Let's say. Yeah. So I think the one thing I miss about the twelve o'clock is the serve, because when it comes around, it really comes around. It goes big. So. Maybe I'll revisit that, but right, right as of now, I don't really need it. Um, I feel like I can still hit pretty good serves with, without the weight at 12 o'clock. But 
that's the one thing I really missed. If you time it really well and that 12 o'clock is on, like, yeah, way on the 12 o'clock, it really takes off. It, it flies. It pops. It pops really Definitely. nice. Definitely. Yeah. So what he did was he took 12 o'clock off. Yeah. So he lost the pop in the serve a little bit, a little bit. And then he started trimming off the sides here because I had it all over the gray. It was a little heavy. Yeah. It did, definitely felt a little heavy. So he actually just peeled it off. I peeled it off. It was actually funny enough it was at the KPSF Open I peeled it oh. off. Oh. <laughs> it was actually the last, it was the third set tiebreak in the first round. Oh, what? I decided to be like, you know what? I need <laughs> Gotta to go lighter. lighter. I got a little lighter. And actually helped out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But um, I think I started, that's when I started. Afterwards, I didn't touch it. I yeah, yeah, no, I noticed. I see that. As words, I haven't touched way. it. Yeah, I haven't touched it ever since. So we put a little putty in here too, just yeah. to, just to bottom weight this a bit, just a little, not much. It's so, probably like less than a gram. Yeah, it's like point five, like half a gram. Yeah, so it's it's, it's very. This basically just to, kind of stable stabilizes it a little bit more. Just to take the shock away from the yeah. the the, the off center hits, which you usually don't do anyways. Yeah, but it just feels nice, I guess. And then, kind of balances. so speaking of shock, underneath here is a VT Advantech leather grip. Yes, it so, is. So, does that help? Uh, for me, it enhances feel more. Leather grips in general enhance more feel. Um, the VT is supposed to take dampen, it yeah. yeah. It dampens, so like when I hit through like an uneven spot, it dampens really well. But also, it definitely with the leather grip, it is thin. So most leather grips are thin, you get more feel. Most leather grips in general don't have, you know, the that vibration, yeah, yeah, the vibration properties of it. So therefore, you'll feel it and feel a little weird, and it just, or it just hurts more. This one actually just feels better. Like I have, I ask, my feels there, but it also helps remove away that damp, like it dampens the vibrations a little bit more. So knowing if you have tennis elbow, it's a perfect grip under. Like, what do they call it? Under grip. Perfect, perfect under uh, grip. Yeah, replacement grip. Replacement grip. Right. Right. So. I personally love it. I ever, I always put it on. Um, if it starts to wear away, I usually tell Harry to fix it for me. But overall, I love it. I mean, the VT of Entech does its job. Um, plus the weights around it. I feel like overall, it's such a great feel and it's tailored to my game, which is perfect. And then obviously, the, finally, we put the, uh, the Dunlop Super. Yep. Super grip. Super grip. Super tack, excuse me. Sorry, super tack, yeah. Super tack grip on it. Yeah, overall, it's a lovely grip. I always, since it came out, I've been using only this grip so far, so. Yeah, we all love this Dunlop Super love that. Tack. And actually, yeah, even the VT event tech just makes it more feel. Yeah. yeah it just feels more Surprisingly, I, I I hit with his racket. You liked it. I was like, huh, that doesn't really feel like a leather underneath, because the leather is a little harsher. <laughs> it is harsher. That's why, like, um, it takes a long time to at least mold it. Yeah. Like this actually doesn't take that much long to mold. So that's Goose Racket. It comes in at about 12.3 ounces total. Yeah. Right now. Even with strings with and everything. Strings and a dampener. 345 grams, guys. The more you know. Try that. <laughs> All right. So that's Coach Goose Blade Pro. That As you can tell. I customized and he kind of slightly uncustomized. All right. Well, true. <laughs> we been, we played around with it. It took, it took a while. It took almost, yeah. I would say, half a year to like really like tune it. it. Yeah, tune it. Tune it to what like, you Like, like guys, if you are playing with weight, don't be afraid to try with it. Like, you will you will have to experiment for a while in order to like it. Some people will go faster. Some people will go slower. That's it's just all about your personal taste, really. Yeah, you're after you use it for a while, you kind of get addicted to lead. And then after you get addicted to lead, you kind of OD on it, and then you have to remove some off. That's what I see most people. Yeah, um, that's doing. true. That's true. Like even with some of the guys that I've played with, they they love the weight. All of a sudden, they're like starting to peel off a little bit because mm -hmm. they notice it was like, okay, it's a little too OD on the or overload on the on the lead too taste. much, too yeah. much. All right, want to thank my man Coach Goo for sharing his racket. Where can we find you, Goo? You can find me at agu.tennis. So I'll also be posting content there as well. All right, guys. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.